today we are going out for a drive in our R32 powered Mark II Golf and you're going to come with us and see what all the fuss is about. <laughs> everyone and welcome to Southeast Mark II Golfs. Today we are taking our R32 powered Mark II Golf out on its first drive since we have done all of that engine work. We replaced the chains, the head gasket and have had the head rebuilt. We've reconditioned all of the brake lines and we've refurbished the engine bay as well. I cannot wait to take this out on a drive. It's been such a long time coming. It's taken over six months, but I wanted to show you why the R32 in a Mark II Golf is such a good conversion. Let's come with us. Hello everyone and welcome to Southeast Mark II Golfs. We are in our Mark II Golf powered by an R32 engine. It's been such a long time to get this back on the road. May 2022 was when we took it off the road. It's now January 2023. We had to do so much work, take the head off, get it reconditioned, change the chains and the head gasket as well, plus a load of other work as well. So to be back in the car, driving it on this lovely crisp winter's morning, it's just the best feeling in the world. I cannot, I cannot describe how good this feels. So a lot of people ask, what makes an R32 so special in a Mark II Golf? And I can tell you now that it is nothing more than the noise. The noise in this is just addictive. And I'll show you why. So one of the concerns that people have with putting the VR6 or R32 in a Mark II Golf is that they can become nose heavy. Now, that is true to an extent because they do hang quite far over the front engine mount, so therefore they do have that sort of nose heavy appearance. But the engine actually weighs no more than a 20 valve turbo once all the ancillaries like your turbo and your intercooler and your pipework and everything like that has been um, installed. Because the R32 has got a lot of alloy and plastic components, that brings the weight right down. And on this car, because we've got you know, what is quite a substantial suspension setup. We have BC Racing coilovers and we've got massive anti-roll bars. We've got a 22 mil at the front and 25 mil anti-roll bars at the back. There was no sense of this car being nose heavy. The turning is spectacular, let's be honest. It will grip and grip and grip. And being an R32 with no turbo or anything like that, the power delivery is really, really linear. So it's very predictable. You don't get that sudden whoosh of a turbo, which then sends you off into a ditch. Also, we have an LSD fitted in this car. We've got a Quaif ATV LSD, which was fitted into this. So coupled with the V5 short ratio gearbox, it absolutely flies. It's laughable 
how fun it is. This car is fitted with a Traxlag full system exhaust and as the conversion was taking place Traxlag actually got in contact with us and asked if they could use our car as the development car for their R32 or 24 valve downpipe. Of course we said yes, I wasn't going to turn that opportunity down. So this car has got the original 24 valve R32 downpipe fitted. Mated to its 2.5 inch full system, it sounds like nothing else. A lot of people say it sounds like a howling banshee, which I think is quite apt. Let me show you what that sounds like. Now one of the major discussions that people ask is, is the VR6 the best sounding six cylinder engine in the world? I think so, and this is why. because it is that linear power delivery, no stress. It was so predictable and controllable and yet you've got that amazing soundtrack. I don't think there's anything better. So my, in my view, the R32 six cylinder is the best sounding six cylinder in the world. I'm sure there will be a lot of disagreement. Let me know your thoughts as well. still lights up the front wheels if you're um, a little bit too heavy with the right foot. So I think 400 horsepower, especially when a boost comes on, would just be basically uncontrollable. So that's why we didn't opt for that. This car is also used as a family car to ferry our two kids around in the back. So I'm not sure that 400 horsepower in a car with basically no safety features would be a particularly good idea. Some might say 285 horsepower in a car with no safety features is a good idea, but it is at least a lot more predictable. Don't really do that much. I think that's probably going to be the uh, the 
foam on the vents. It used to spit the foam out. I did do a bit of a temporary repair a few years ago, but that's probably well past it, let's be honest. So uh, that's gonna be another job, which I can't wait for. <laughs> it's a very cold morning this morning. It's about minus one. There's a lot of grit on the road. It's all ended up on the windscreen. I went to use my washers. The washers aren't working. So I've got to find out what's going on there. So what I do like about this car is the fact that it can actually be quite civilized. So as well as it being like an angry warrior, when you put your foot down, that <laughs> made Joe wet himself. <laughs> it's actually also quite civilized when you just put it into a higher gear and you just cruise along. You can hear yourself think, you can actually play music if you wanted to, and you can listen to it. So I hope people understand why the R32 and the Mark II Golf is such an appealing prospect. It's so much fun. I'm so, so pleased to have got this car back on the road. You can probably tell by the smile on my face. I really hope you enjoyed it too. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and I'll see you on our next video. Glad you cleaned it. Yeah, really. I have to wash the salt off now, aren't I? <laughs>